It was high tide when we left and both lock gates were open. Quebec City receded in our wake as we headed out into a turbulent St. Lawrence River. We had a seven knot current in our favor, but a 30 knot northeasterly wind resulted in predictably short, steep waves, and the wind picked up the spray and hurled it against the windshield. The water temperature dropped from 72 to 49 degrees when we encountered salt water for the first time since leaving the Hudson. Stopping places for a boat the size of Venture are few and far between along this stretch of the mighty river, but we were able to secure a berth in the snug Cap Leg La Marina, where, overnight, the wind dropped, and we found ourselves in peaceful surroundings with only the sound of a nearby waterfall as a lullaby. Our next landmark was the distinctive Prince Shoal Lighthouse at the mouth of the Saguenay Fjord. The speed of the current was ferocious. In this area, water depths are up to 1,000 feet deep and the tidal range 20 feet. The mixing of fresh and salt water combined with conflicting currents produced sudden turbulence and powerful upwellings from great depths. Saguenay Fjord is huge and branches off the north shore of the St. Lawrence. Water depth is 900 feet deep just inside the entrance and in most areas remains as much as 300 feet right up to the shore, making anchoring almost impossible. We were lucky to find a berth in the small marina at Lens Saint Jean, where Venture towered over other boats. The following morning we headed downstream, out of the fjord, past the town of Tatusac, and back into a squally St. Lawrence. We crossed the width of the river to the north shore of the Gaspesi Peninsula where the strong wind was driving the windmills which were a common feature of the landscape, including a monster of radical egg-beater design. Our route closely followed the coast of the peninsula. Our first stop was at Rimouski on August the 6th where the harbour master told us the temperature had been just above freezing two days earlier. We were now favoured with perfect weather in an area known for its ferocious storms and numerous shipwrecks. Our next stop was the town of Saint Anne de Desmonts. Whimsical works of art grace the land alongside the harbour. It was here we reached our maximum northing on this coast. 
Our further south had been two degrees below the equator in the Galapagos three months ago. Riviere au Renard, Fox River, was our next port of call. It is very much dedicated to fishing, with only a few berths for pleasure boats. Like all ports along this exposed coast, the harbour had massive defences to protect it against the onslaught of the weather. Skeins of fog layered over the hills and gradually descended to the surface of the water. The town of Perse has twin landmarks of the Pierce Rock and nearby Ile Bonaventure famous for the second largest but most accessible gannet colony in the North Atlantic, where 50,000 birds breed on the precipitous cliffs. We now left Quebec province and entered New Brunswick, home to the Acadians, who speak a different flavour of French. From there we crossed the Northumberland Strait to the English-speaking Prince Edward Island and the port of Summerside, where we found a snug berth right outside the yacht club. The following day, we passed under the eight-mile-long Confederation Bridge, which links Prince Edward Island with New Brunswick. Charlottetown is the capital of Prince Edward Island, and we were allocated a rather exposed berth at the Yacht Club. Quite by chance, our arrival coincided with the annual Gold Cup Parade. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police Pipe Band highlighted the island's Scottish heritage. Thank you very much. 